Professor Gadget has analyzed the 007 patent, and he's analyzed it against Mr. Goldvigger's product, the uh, Rejector 2005. He has reached an conclusion that the uh, Rejector does not infringe the 007 patent, and he's going to share his analysis with you. What you're going to learn is Mr. Um, excuse me, Professor Gadget uh, relied on lots of evidence that suggests that the 007 patent is really limited to a seatbelt restraint. The dispute between the parties is really whether or not the rejector has a seatbelt restraint. Excuse me, a, 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 um, a passenger restraint system. The issue in the case for the question of infringement is whether or not the rejector has a passenger restraint system. What um, Professor Gadget will show to you is that the inventor, Mr. Gunner, repeatedly described his passenger restraint system as a seatbelt. Now, Mr. Anand, with all due respect, did point to an early notebook that referred to a seatbelt, but that wasn't the only time that Mr. Gunner described his invention as a seatbelt. You will see, there, there's the notebook um, you can see on the screen. Uh, Dr. Excuse me, Professor Gadget relies on this document to show that the inventor himself understood his invention to be a seatbelt. Here's a, a portion of the patent, uh, the patent description that describes the passenger restraint system as a belt and latch system, and it shows a seatbelt type restraint. During prosecution, the same thing happened. The patent office rejected the claim over a product that um, limited the movement of the driver of the vehicle. And Mr. Gunner, in prosecuting his patent application, argued to the examiner that that prior art is no good because what I have is a seat belt. What I have does not fully restrict any arm or torso movement. So the, in the inventor has repeatedly described his invention as a seat belt. Now, the rejector doesn't have a seat belt. And Mr. Gunner realizes that, so he's relying on the court's claim construction. The court construed the term uh, passenger restraint system to be a restraint that reasonably limits passenger movement of the arms and torso. Sorry. Um, but there's an important word in that claim construction reasonable. What is reasonable for a car is one thing. What's reasonable for a roller coaster is another thing. And what's reasonable for a spy vehicle that's traveling ext extremely quickly and injecting a spy at fast pace is also going to have a different reasonable restraint. And what you'll learn here is that the reasonableness of the restraint in Professor, excuse me, in Mr. Gunner's device is a seatbelt. That's what he invented. Now, Professor Gadget is also going to share with you his opinion that the 007 patent is invalid. Now, Mr. Sharma referred to this prior art document, the 917 patent, as a golf cart. What Mr. Sharma did not share with you is that this golf cart is more than a golf cart. It's a golf cart that has an ejector seat. And he also didn't share with you that the patent office, when it decided to allow the 007 patent to issue, did not have this piece of prior art before it. Now, the patent office generally does a really good job, but the patent office has a hard time evaluating the prior art that it doesn't have. So the patent office may have made a mistake, not because they're incompetent, but because they didn't have all the facts at their fingertips. So it is Professor Goldiggers, excuse me, Professor um, Gadget's opinion that the patent's invalid in view of this uh, gol golf cart that has an ejector seat. Now, Professor Gadget appreciates that this golf cart does not have a reasonable uh, a passenger restraining system. So if you're trying to solve the problem of having an ejector that's going to go on a really fast car, it makes sense that you would look to other fast-moving vehicles to figure out the types of restraints that they have. And sure enough, another relevant 
vehicle is a roller coaster. And these roller coasters have restraints that limit the pace, the um, movement of the uh, rider. So it's Mr. Goldigger's opinion, and he'll share this with you, that each and every element of the claim of the 007 patent is invalid because the 917 patent teaches each limitation of the, excuse me, the 917 golf cart patent teaches each limitation of the 007 patent, and it would be obvious to simply add a seat belt to limit movement. Now, Mr. Anand said to you, it's common sense. You know what? I say the same thing. It's common sense. If you have a vehicle that has an ejector seat, isn't it common sense to add a, a passenger restraining system? And isn't it common sense to add a restraining system that's appropriate for the particular use? Mr. Or Professor Gadget concludes that the invention is obvious for that reason. Now, I've put on the slide screen here before you the jury verdict. When this trial concludes, and after you've heard all of the evidence, uh, Judge Symes is going to ask you to go back to the jury room and complete this jury verdict form. You have two questions. One question is, is the patent valid? And another, well, the first question is, is the patent infringed? And the second question is, is the, is the patent valid? And we request, the defendants request, that you answer question one, the rejector is not infringed, and question two, is the invention obvious? As yes, it's obvious. Thank you.